going on, everybody? Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the 2023 NWSL Championship here at the Adobe Stage. This is the Offside Special brought to you by Together. I'm your host, Justine Brown. For those of you that don't know Together, it is a media company founded by four incredible athletes, one of which you might see here today. These are my co-hosts, Madison Hammond of Angel City. I think you guys are familiar. Hi, everyone. And Michelle Alozia of Houston Dash. Um, I have to tell you guys a couple of things about them if you don't know them, but I think you are pretty familiar. Uh, as you know, Madison Hammond is a defender for the Angel City. She is the first Native American player to play in the NWSL, so let's give it up for that. She scored her first ever NWSL goal this season. And the fun fact that a lot of people don't know is she's actually a together girl. She's one of our own. She works with us. She does two things, that, both of these two play soccer and do other things at the same time, so we'll just leave that at that. <laughs> Michelle Ford for the Houston Dash, also a member of the Nigeria national team, went to the World Cup this season. She, uh, I don't know, has a molecular biology degree, so that's nothing big. She's a research technician. Gonna be a doctor? Yeah. Hopefully okay, yeah, the whole thing. Who knows? <laughs> and I'm a Tennessee Vol, so I gotta shout it out. You're a Tennessee Vol, Vol too. For life, baby. Yep. And they're both super fly, which is actually why I'm honored to be on stage with them because <laughs> I'm just trying to steal their fits. I just wanna talk a little bit about 2023, which was an incredible season for the NWSL. I mean, I'm looking out here right now and fan engagement, fan turnout, the games, the competition was out of this world. I'm gonna to toss it to Madison. She's gonna give us a couple of her highlights from this season. For sure. Um, I'm actually gonna quickly pause. Um, for those who don't know, November is Native American Heritage Month, so I just wanted to give a quick land acknowledgement for the land that we are on and giving respect to the indigenous land that we're occupying. Um, and I just wanted to recognize the Kumaya uh, tribe that resides here. There's a pretty small tribe here. My tribe is black in New Mexico. Super proud, San Felipe Pueblo. But I just wanted us all to take a moment and just respect the land that we're on and then get to enjoy this beautiful game later. And yeah, but moving into the fun stuff with the soccer. Um, yeah, I think just like looking at the year in a review, it was an incredible year for the NWSL, not only in terms of the media deal, which we'll talk about, but in terms of just the on-field play, the parity in the league was insane. I think just the fact that the San Diego Wave, boo. <laughs> Um, she was the, just kidding. the fact that they were able to take the shield with 36 points, you can debate that both sides, but at the same time, I think it was just so incredible to see how much incredible soccer we saw this year on the field. And I think another huge takeaway was us at Angel City going on an 11 game unbeaten streak, um, making history, making history, making the playoffs for the first time. That was incredible to be a part of and to just kind of watch the league continue to grow. And now for it all to culminate in the most incredible story of Allie Krieger versus Megan Rapino. We're all just really excited for a really great night tonight. Give it up for the vets competing tonight for the last time. Uh, I know Michelle has a few takeaways, so let's hear what you got. Yeah, I mean, I think this year was really huge. Obviously, the World Cup happened, and we saw so many record breaks in Australia, and it was so amazing to be there for my first World Cup. Um, it was a, 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 big, a big year for debutants, and it was the first time that we had four African nations make it to the knockout round, so I just love that. Yeah, give it up. It just shows the growth of soccer, and that's amazing, showing that we're closing the gap all around, um, and there's no real big um, difference between teams. But also, I got to give it out to my Houston team, you know. Hey, Jane Campbell won it for the goalkeeper of the year. We had the least amount of goals scored, um, and it's been amazing just to be a part of a defensive uh, powerhouse. So those are my takeaways for this year. Uh, yeah, speaking of attendance and record-breaking year, obviously, like Michelle said, she was at the World Cup, I was at the World Were any of you at the World Cup? Oh wow, it was an incredible experience and to see that happen and then show up to Snapdragon or show up to an Angel City game and see the stands full is actually absolutely what everybody's looking for. I'm going to read a couple of the records that were set, broken, things this season. First of all, uh, Megan Rapinoe playing tonight. Her final regular season game set a season record of 683,000 viewers. CBS viewership was up 41%. Paramount viewership was up 83%. And I think a huge one is a record TV rights deal that just happened, 240 million over four years, worth 40 times the current deal. Yeah. 
So we all know visibility is a huge key to be able to have favorite teams and favorite players and be able to see them, and that is a huge turning point. So I think, like, let's give it up for the NWSL one time for that for sure. It's what these players deserve. I want to know, obviously, like I said, Angel, we have Angel City fans in the building. Okay. We're pretty local. We have Houston fans in the building. Hey, so. Okay. 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 A little Sorry, quiet, what? but it's okay over here. <laughs> Do we have any San Diego Wave fans in the building? Well, I have a special guest backstage. I think we might have leaked the secret of who it is. She's one of the founders <laughs> of Together, so we're going to start there. She is a forward for the San Diego Wave. She's by far one of the best strikers this country has ever seen. And she has 115 U.S. Women National Team goals. She's a two-time World Cup winner. She goes by the name of Alex Morgan. She's here somewhere. We'll give her a second. I don't oh, see her right yet. Oh, she oh, she's coming from the left. <laughs> oh, here we go. Stroll out. Hello, they seem to know who you San are. San Diego. <laughs> All right, well, Alex, uh, I think 90% of the people out here are Wave fans. You guys play in this incredible stadium. I know. Yeah. It's a little bit. It's okay to be a little sad. <laughs> But you're here and they're excited. Can you talk a little bit about these fans and this season and, and the experience at Snapdragon this year with all the with all the turnout? Yeah, I mean, not only was this season incredible and making it to the semifinal was amazing and winning the Shields, but I think the, the fans really willed us just having sold out crowds, averaging, I think, the highest that any NWSL team has averaged and kind of just packing the snap every single weekend. Um, it's just been incredible, and this club has supported us in every way possible, and that's just so important to feel as players, just supported. Like, we have resources. We have the ability to just go on the field and do our job and not advocate and fight for more of what we deserve, and so that's been really nice. Yeah. Give it up. You guys don't have to be shy. You can cheer as much as you want. <laughs> Uh, Alex, this isn't your first rodeo or second rodeo or third rodeo. <laughs> not aging you. I'm just saying uh, you've yeah, seen the growth. The... You've seen the growth firsthand. I'm not going to curse, but I really want to right now, Justine. You fought a lot behind the scenes for a lot of these things, and you now get to like experience it for yourself. How long do you think till we see every stadium with the same attendance as Snapdragon? It's not long. I mean, when I started as a professional athlete, that was a while ago. But from when we're going to see Snap. Uh, not Snapdragon, we're gonna see Snapdragon a lot. We're gonna see packed stadiums um, every weekend. We're not far away. I think what we saw was the, uh, the media rights deal um, that was just signed 40 mil a year for five years, something around 240 million over five years. Also just having the expansion teams at a coming in at a valuation and an expansion fee, uh, the highest that it's ever been. Just having all of you guys out here, uh, it, this is crazy. The first, it's honestly so cool. The first year that uh, we had the NWSL, I was with Portland, and it's my only championship that I have ever won um, to date in the NWSL so far. Well, next year. You've won a few championships in your day, though. <laughs> but you guys, like, this is so cool to see this because this just... 10 years ago, this did not happen. I mean, you guys were more than what were in the stadium at our final. And so just to see the growth in just 10 years is amazing. Year to year, it's been incredible. And I'm just sitting back and watching, and I'm in awe. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm just so happy to see the growth. And you mentioned you guys won the Shield. So there you go. Parity this season in the NWSL was insane. We saw the last weekend before playoffs determined how many team spots. Yeah. I won't let you guys duke it out up here, You're but backstage. For the shield. <laughs> uh, yeah, LA squeaked on in there. <laughs> we did, we did. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say is like, can you talk a little bit about this season for you personally, um, winning the shield and also like kind of the journey you guys went on. You had a tough June, you went on the break, you came back and went on an uphill climb. Yeah. This is by far the most competitive league in the world. We for sure want to make it the best league in the world all around, and I'm fighting for that. We're all fighting for that. But it's the most competitive. Week in and week out, you have to play like your best players. You have to have the depth on the bench. You have to have everybody ready to go. Um, you can't take a week off. And we saw that with the last game. Just I, I think there was, out of the 12 teams, do we have four? Do we have 12 or 14? 12. 12. 12. I'm, I'm 14 next year. Out of 12 teams, 
there was around nine or ten that had the ability to make it into playoffs, which is just crazy for the last game to to take it down to the last 20 minutes. So winning the Shield, it was amazing. Um, I, you know, going into the game, we had no idea because obviously LA had to do their job. So yes, we did. We did. We helped each other out. <laughs> that was great. Um, and and yeah, just after the year that you know I've had, obviously like in New Zealand and Australia, just to be here and to win something so important and to do it behind all the fans in this city that I absolutely love, that I'm gonna call home forever, that my that my daughter is going to say that she's from San Diego, like that means so much to me. So to be able to win the Shield um, this year uh, really meant a lot. And then I feel like this is a trick question because I don't know that you ever have a true off season these days. We're looking down the pipe of an Olympics, but do you have any off season plans? Oh yeah. I am going um, to Costa Rica. Okay, <laughs> can I come? So I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go and enjoy a little off time. What about you guys? Are you guys? Same. Yeah. Same Costa traveling. Rica, I'll see you there. No, yeah. not Costa Rica, not Costa Rica. But yeah, just traveling. Yeah. yeah. And then, I mean, we got to take some time off. I know, because... but we're going to be back much quicker than you all think. So I know you're all going to be sad after today, but I promise we'll literally be back so yeah. soon. Yeah, and off season is shrinking. Yeah. shrinking so, so we're going to be back soon, but we got to take some time off away from the field to make sure we continue to love it. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. For sure. Yeah, do you guys have anything you want to ask, Alex? Oh, wow. Um, I, I really just threw that yeah, out Yeah, you really there. did. Sorry, up. caught you off guard. I have one. We have one question. We'd be remiss not to ask. Oh, you can give yes. the politically correct answer if you'd like. Ooh, but I'm excited for this. I think I know what it is. Do you have a game prediction? I do. Okay, a winner and Let a us know. I, I think that it's going to go to extra time. Uh, it's going to be tied 1-1, and I believe Gotham's going to win it, and then... <laughs> Oh, hot takes. What about you guys? You go, you go. I actually think it's definitely going to go into overtime. I think, though, it's going to go into PKs, but Gotham will also win. Okay. Yeah. PKs? Yeah, I see I a like PKs. That. I see PKs. All right, PKs. let's see. Madison? I played at the rain, obviously, but I think it's also, I do think it's going to be extra time. Gotham's going to win 2-1. Oh, a sweet. Any rain fans fans out there? Sorry. I mean, yeah, so sorry. Three We're taking three. a sweet. I mean, I, mean, I mean, you guys probably don't care about my opinion, but I got the rain one zero. <laughs> so there you go. But I also, I also think if if it really goes to more extra time, I'm like Gotham will have played what two, three games in six days at the rate that they're playing. Literally, <laughs> they played 120 minutes last week, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Well, Alex, thank you so much. I know these fans are beyond stoked to have you here. And we appreciate you here. And y'all, shout out to Together. Together doesn't exist without Alex Morgan. This is her birth child. She wanted more for everybody, and here we are. So thank you, Alex. Thank you all. Thank you. Is this my cue? Well, you can stay. You're more than welcome. <laughs> thank you all so much. Enjoy the game. Sorry, I didn't mean to kick her off. I'm so sorry. I was just... I know people want to go to the game. I see it. We were going to give a little championship preview, which we kind of just did. But uh, I want to, after last week's game, we saw some epic, two epic goals. One I think was intentional. One I'm not sure was intentional for both these teams the to be here. You guys have your predictions. Uh, do you want to give any takeaways for the game, Keys? Yeah, I think. Oh, do you want to go first? Yeah, I think that, you know, Gotham has a really amazing front line, and they just really need to put away their chances. They have Esther Gonzalez, they have Anamanu, they have Stengel, they have Purse, they have, Will, like, who else can I name? Um, so just putting away their chances. But at the same time, then OL really needs to be patient in the defense and just attack when they get their chances. But I think both teams are really big on crosses, so it's going to be all about defending crosses, making sure, you know, you're aware of Huerta and, and Rapino and just knowing that these crosses are going to come in, so it's all about box defense. Like that. What I think my two biggest things is figuring out how you're going to control the game, um, control the tempo. I think Gotham has the ability to go a bit more transitional, whereas the rain tries to, you know, dictate play a little bit more. So that's going to kind of come down to, like you were saying, crosses the wide areas. I'm very interested to see the nice longer where to match up. I feel like they're going to kind of counter counterbalance each other. Um, and so then it's going to come down to the midfield. Like, how are you going to contain Rose Lavelle? Um, Emily Sonnet has been in an amazing form. So I think that for Gotham, it's containing the midfield, but also dick, like owning the wide areas in on offense. A great take. I know you mentioned Esther. I think one of the best acquisitions 
of the off season, and I think you're seeing that for Gotham, who went from zero to 100 in one year. I think that's huge. I hope we get an epic Rapino uh, set piece. Mm -hmm. We'll take it. We'll definitely take <laughs> um, that. Mostly we want to thank you all for coming out. If you don't follow together, please do. Uh, and also, thank you to my co-host, Madison Haven. Thanks, y'all. Michelle Lozia. And I'm Justine Brown. Thank you guys so much. Enjoy the game. We'll thank see you, you in there. Guys.